the greater good. Hey everybody, Greater Good Mining here. I am excited because today PB Farmer released his overclocks for the KS0 Ultra. I like these overclocks because I want to be able to see how hot the power stages get on these things. That is the bottleneck. I really like that I can custom adjust the voltage and the overclock and watch the power stages with PB Farmer's overclocks. So I am pretty excited to FAFO. The way this is set up, I've already done several videos to show you how to prepare for overclocks on your KS0 Ultra, your KS0 Pro. Um, I will show on the screen a couple videos that you can watch to prep to, to do this. You have to do some prep to get the max out of these machines. Now there's cheaper ways to do it too. You can overclock it to a lower extent if you know what I mean. Like you could do a single shroud on the barrel plug side with a fan going through and maybe not repaste the chips and not redo the pads um, maybe just do the copper heat sinks in a single shroud this is a free mod just move the fans to the outside the internal fans you can see here are moved to the outside check the description of the video for everything you would need to get this done now i'm going to be watching the power consumption with my meter box and speaking of meter box meter box has been very generous in helping me do giveaways and today is no exception if you want to enter to win a KS0 Pro. That's right, a KS0 Pro. Meterbox is going to give a KS0 Pro away to help me celebrate hitting 4,000 subs. And now I'm up to like 4,700 subs and I really am grateful to the Meterbox for helping me do that. So if you want to enter this giveaway, you need to first subscribe to my channel, like this video, and then comment in the comment section something nice about the video or something nice about Casper mining and put hashtag meter box. And I will use random comment picker to pick a winner about a week from now. And you can enter that way to win a KS0 Pro from the meter box. So thanks again to the meter box. Let's move on. I've got everything set up already. I'm going to show you guys how to upload the PB Farmer firmware where you can get it and we will start faffling with a PB Farmer overclocks. Let's go. Okay, first things first, if you have the overclocks that I showed in my other video already uploaded into your KS0 Ultra, you will need to go through the very specific readme file that I talked about in that overclocking video to reset your machine. You will need to upload the reset firmware. So make sure you follow those readme instructions to reset your machine back to stock before you do anything else. Okay, so this is where you need to start. You need to download the overclocks. This is Ardugan, AKA PB Farmers GitHub page. I will leave a link directly to this so you can just find it easier that way. So read through the information on his GitHub. Um, you can even backtrace and go back to his main page here. Just look through everything. Um, I'm not gonna like read it all out loud to you. Just read through the instructions. Um, but I will show you basically how to do this. So there is, make sure you download the correct file also. There's KS0 Pro, KS0 Ultra, which is the one we want for this video. And there's other ones like KS1, KS2. So if you want to overclock other machines, he has other overclocks. So you'll click on this file and then you will download it. And then I'll show you in the firmware where to upload it. Here we are in the stock KS0 Ultra web GUI from Ice River. And we're going to go to firmware upgrade. And then we're going to click select file. Then you're going to go to wherever you download your file to and click on it, click open. And then you'll see, it'll say like fake path. And then it will say BGZ at the end. Don't worry about the fake path part. That's just the way the file looks. Um, so then you're gonna hit update. And then it takes about like 20 seconds, I believe to do its thing. And then it'll ask you to restart the machine. Okay, operation succeeded, hit okay and confirm restarting the machine. And we'll just give it a minute to reboot. Operation executed. So we'll give it a minute to reboot and then we should hopefully see EB Farmer's updated web GUI. Okay, so once you go to log back into the web GUI, go ahead and read this software disclaimer. And if you accept, hit accept. And then here we are in light mode. I'm gonna flip it to dark mode because I like the darkness. 
Okay, so here we are in PB Farmer's Web GUI. Um, it takes a while for it to start showing data. Mine's been running for 11 minutes, so just be aware if, you've, if it's yours, it's only been running for a couple minutes. Just wait, you'll see data start to show up. So um, the one thing that I really love, besides the complete adjustability of these overclocks, I love being able to adjust the chip uh, voltages and the overclocks on my own, but I really love that you can see the power stage temperatures here. These are the um, power stages that we put the copper heat sinks on. So that is like the bottleneck for these devices. This is the green line right here. It shows um, power stage temps. Now the max that these are rated for is 125 degrees Celsius. I don't like to push it that hard. I'm overclocking this in a room temperature room. It's like 75 degrees in here, but my final destination for this KS0 Ultra is gonna be you know, a hot garage that can get up to like 90 something degrees. So you might want to try and overclock these in the environment that they will permanently be in. I usually, um, when I've done my other overclock videos, like the KS0 Pro video you might have seen where I use BB Farmers overclocks, I shot for like one teens uh, to like as high as 120. And I don't like to go over that. That's just my personal preference. You guys can do whatever you want. Let's go ahead and start adjusting these overclocks. To adjust the overclocks, you're gonna have to go right here where it says minor. And then you will have to, you know, add in your pool and your mining address and all that stuff like that. Um, but for now, I just wanted to show you, there's a warning here, read the warning. Um, overclocking can be dangerous. And if you do this to your um, ice river, you are gonna be voiding your warning tree and you can damage it. So wa waiver from PB Farmer and waiver from me as well. If you do this, it's 100% at your own risk. Um, follow the instructions carefully, make sure you do the proper prep. Uh, and you, even if you do all those things, there's silicone lottery involved and you can still damage your machine. Uh, I don't want anybody to like damage your machine. So just be very careful and know that if you do this, it's hundred percent at your own risk. Okay. So uh, voltage and clock changes will take effect immediately, but keep in mind the ASIC will slowly ramp up to set your clock. A large clock increase may take up to 10 minutes to take full effect. So you have to be patient with these overclocks. You have to um, watch them closely and you have to just kind of make small adjustments and wait until you see what the machine does. And it can take a long time for you to really know what the hash rate will be. Um, the 30 minute average is kind of a good way to like look at your your overclock to make sure it's effective. So um, just be, be patient and um, be mindful that to dial these in perfectly, it will take some time. And um, a lot of people ask me, what are your clocks? And they just want to punch in somebody else's overclocks. And I mean, you can try that, but just be aware that there is no perfect clock for any machine. You know, there is silicone lottery. Your setup might be different. Your ambient temperatures might be different. Um, so just be aware of that. Um, there's no enforcement on the limits. So if you punch in something crazy, um, you, you might damage your machine. So proceed at your own risk. Click I understand. And then we can start adjusting the overclocks and the voltages. Okay, so I haven't saved any of this. I haven't punched this in and saved it yet, but I just wanted to show you quick math on how to overclock these and adjust things. You wanna start with the clock offset and leave the voltage alone, and you wanna do a mild clock offset. Um, and I'm just using this as an example to show you the math. I'm not saying punch in like 20% increase right off the bat. I'm just showing you the math and it's easy to punch in 20% like for math. So uh, let's do some mathing. Uh, 20% of 400 giga hash, which is a stock KS0 Ultra, would give you 80 extra giga hash. That's what you should expect out of your machine. So if you adjust the overclocks, the clock offset, and do a 20% increase, you should see 80 more giga hash. Your machine should be consistently saying that you're getting 480 giga hash. If you're not getting the expected hash rate, when you adjust the overclock up, like the clock offset up, then that usually means you need to increase your voltage. So just make sure that as you're adjusting the offset up, if you start noticing you're not getting the increased hash rate that you want from just adjusting this offset, you might need to adjust the voltage up. So every machine is different. Please make sure you're adjusting the overclocks on your own. You know, using other people's overclocks as a baseline can be a recipe for disaster. Your machine might not be able to tolerate it when there's Ken, just, just FYI. So that's how we're gonna do it. One eternity later. This is after me messing around for hours and like kind of like waiting for each little adjustment that I've done to take effect, if you know what I mean. So you don't wanna just punch these numbers in just because I have them in there. This is my machine with my specific setup. 
and a silicone lottery also plays a role. Also, check this out. Like I've swapped out even the shroud to just test. So don't punch in just these numbers because your shroud might be different from mine. Your ambient temperature might be different from mine. Your silicone lottery, lottery and the way you've set up your machine might different, be different from mine. The reason why I have a, um, swapped my shroud out is because I am in an air conditioned apartment right now doing these overclocks and the chip temperatures weren't warming up enough for me. So one of the things you can adjust in PV Farmers overclocks are the fan configurations and you can change the fan mode to target temp. You can um, select what chip temp you want the internal fans to shoot for. So 75 is like this like perfect sweet spot for my machine. Um, I was noticing that anything below like 60 or so for the chip temp, my machine wasn't performing as well. So I set the minimum fan speed to 50% for safety and this is where my machine is happiest. So I needed the air going directly down the middle of the machine and not over the heat sink. Like um, the meter box shrouds are perfect because they will blast air down the middle of the machine and over the heat sinks to cool off the chip temps. But when I've already you know, changed out the thermal paste, changed out the thermal pads, put a high powered intake and exhaust shroud on and to have the internal fan set to 100%, it was too much cooling. So I've been faffling for hours, trying different shrouds, trying different um, overclocks and voltage offsets. This is where I landed. And your setup, like I said, might be different. But anyway, I went up very slowly. You start with the clock offset. You can start with like a 10% increase. And you should see a 10% increase in your hash rate. So this is a 400 giga hash machine. And if you click this up to 10% increase, you if your machine is okay with what you're doing and it's happy, you will see an extra 40 giga hash on your machine. So does that make sense? 10% increase in 400 is 40 giga hash. If you don't, your machine might not be happy for some other reason. Your chip temps might be cold, too cold, too cool like mine were, or you might need to bump up the voltage a little bit. Some machines just don't like to have the lower voltage, even stock. I've seen people say my machine will get over 350 even when the chips are hot. It might be because it's silicone lottery and they need a little bit more voltage. So your, your setup will be different. Even your power supply can kind of affect things sometimes. Um, so I have tweaked this clock up slowly and you will know when your machine isn't happy. Say you bump this up like a crazy amount without bumping up the voltage. You just are, aren't patient. You wanted to go nuts and you increase this by like 30%, like right off the bat, never adjusted your voltage. You'll see, you'll see the machine is not happy. Your hash rate will drop. You'll see like on the five minute, you'll see this thing kind of torpedo down. You know what I mean? Like the red line here that shows your five minute hash rate, it'll start tanking. And most likely your um, chip voltages will drop. When your chip voltages drop too much, the machine isn't happy. Um, so you'll see the hash rate drop and you'll see these, you know, graphs kind of drop, you know, so you'll know the machine isn't happy. Um, sometimes it'll even just go down to zero. So if you go slowly with the clock offset and you see that the machine isn't happy, like your hash rate drops, then that usually means you need to bump up the voltage a tiny bit. And I, you can see the increase is a very small amount in comparison to the clock offset. So 56% increase in clock offset for me with an 11% increase in voltage offset got me all the way up to like 632 giga hash on the 30 minute average. And I'm not even done messing around. I just wanted to get this video out to you guys. Um, I've been like running it since I rebooted it for two and a half hours, but I've been messing with this kind of like all day, like changing settings and putting different shrouds on, testing different things. So. I didn't want to show you all that because it would have been like a 45 minute long video. I'm just showing you what you need to do to get the best results for your machine. And then I will tell you what I did to my machine. So um, you see my overclocks for now and my voltage offset. I'm pretty happy with this because it's been running nice and steady. I'm getting 632 giga hash and you can see my board temperatures are fine. And I will show the setup that I have currently and I might change this back when I go bring this back out to the garage. But for now I have the, like a custom shroud that I 3D printed myself, blowing air down the middle of the KS0 with a 
the Axial 1238 so that you can get, uh, you know, it's an Amazon affiliate link. I have those Amazon affiliate links in the description if you want to buy any of this stuff. But the Axial 1238 um, is attached to the custom sh uh, shroud that I 3D printed. I've got my 240 watt uh, power supply with a little bit of air blowing over it from the ASIC itself. And it is very happy like this. My voltages, they kind of keep chopping up and down, um, 470 to 480. But, you know, my hash rate's pretty steady, so I guess I'm, I'm okay with that. Um, chip temperatures, this is, I mean, it seems like high, but this is where it wants to be. This seems to be where the ultras, Ultra is the most happy. Like, I was, like I said, in the 40s and 50s earlier with my chip temps, and the thing was not happy. It does not like that. I was, I was cooling it off too much, and that's because of the Arctic MX6 thermal paste, the thermal pads, and the double shroud setup. Um, it was, it was too much in my air conditioned apartment, um, but I probably will be fine when I put it back out in the garage. Like I said, address these overclocks in the environment that you are going to have this thing permanently. And that way you don't have to worry about like changing them out. Give yourself wiggle room too. Don't, don't push it to the point where the thing's crashing all the time. Cause then you're just going to have the thing crashing and you're not going to know. And two days later, you're going to be like, Oh shoot. I, I checked on my machine and my hash rate was all gone, you know? So don't lose mining time because you want to push this thing an extra 50 giga hash just you know give yourself some wiggle room make sure it's stable watch it for a while in the environment that it's going to be in and then you'll be happier because you'll get the most out of your machine and um it'll be the most efficient that way also you want you don't want to push the voltage up too high unless you you need to so get that overclock get the clocks adjusted up first and then if it starts crashing bump the voltage a tiny bit and then bump the clocks up again until it crashes and then if you are done and you don't want to overclock anymore just bring those clocks back down just a tiny bit and then you know you're stable so anyway this is where i landed and this machine seems to be happy with the setup so um i hope that you guys have been successful with your overclocks um i really like these overclocks because i like the detail i like that you can adjust things i like that i can see the power stage temps like right now the max that i'm getting is 102 that's great like the, the maximum that you what you don't want to go over is about 125 because that's the that's what the hardware says is like the limits 125 celsius so i still have a lot of wiggle room on my power stages you will probably see me continue to faffle this thing with this thing and do f future videos to push it a little bit harder um, because i feel like i can get a little bit more out of this um, as far as the uh, power consumption goes um, i'll show you on the screen 200 watts for the asic itself and then the single fan that I have running is uh, on a separate meter box. It's getting pulling about like 21 watts. So my total system wattage, if you add them both together and kind of like just round it around it, it's like about 220 to 225 watts. And it fluctuates a little bit here and there. So about 225 watts uh, for 632 giga hash. And I honestly think that you could probably get away with not changing the thermal paste, not changing the thermal pads putting a single shroud with a fan on it and put the copper heat sinks on the MOSFETs. And I think you could very easily get these same results with mi minimal mods, shroud kit, copper heat sinks, a good power supply. And I think you would probably be able to get these same results that I'm getting. So um, just be patient and continue to tweak the overclocks. If you guys need any help or advice, um, you can hop into my discord. The uh, link is in the description. And if this video is helpful to you, you know, consider using my uh, links that are in the description. Um, if you want an ice river, the Caspa ASICs, um, the discount, I believe is dropping on August 1st to 1.5%. Uh, but if you want to buy another KSA or ultra or whatever, you can still get a discount. Um, use my discount code greater and I mine straight to my tangent wallet. I'll leave the discount code uh, in the description of the video as well. And then, like I said, I got Amazon affiliate links for some of the products that I used to do this video. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, I, it's a little bit more dry when you're talking about these overclocks sometimes, but I hope it was helpful. Uh, if it was hit the like button and consider subscribing to my channel and don't forget to keep it decentralized for the greater good. The greater good.